Why, good morning. It's Robbie from Southern California having, well, you can't even see it, a cup of coffee. I'm just out here today just to watch the birds. Yes, you got gardeners all over in the hillsides. It's amazing how loud it sounds. And yet they're so far away. But it echoes through the canyon. I thought I'd just come out here and kind of watch the birds start to come in. There, there's a lot of different places they're feeding from. So they don't always come in here. They may go into the other side. I'm going to change this area. You know what I wanted to talk about today? Oh, look at the scrub jay. Look at that. They have always been one of my favorite birds since I was a little kid. I used to hand feed them when I was a kid. I think it terrified my mom. She couldn't understand why birds would come out of the trees to come feed by my hand. So I don't know. But anyways, I was going through my computer early this morning and I find so many videos. And they're not actually videos, just so much footage I've done. Sometimes they would have been a video or I, you know, looked at it and thought, oh, nobody's going to want to hear this or, or there's weed whackers and blowers and stuff in the back, mainly weed whackers. And I think, well, I don't know. And then I don't put it up. And then some of them really are worth putting up or I find things I work on and then I go on to another subject and total, I have, can't believe how many scrub jays there are right now. Or I go on to another subject and find out there's just so much other things I want to talk about and do. So I kind of put it off to the side and there's so many folders on my computer that I completely forget about them. I did one on seeds. I did one, another one on buckets, uh, another strawberry tower. And some of them is just me sitting in the garden, pruning a plant, just chit chatting on my thoughts. I might periodically throw those up there. I'll warn you so you don't have to waste your time. But some of them are just so long, even the pizza one. The, the pizza garden I put up, the vertical garden, which I absolutely love, and I'm working on another one already. Um, it was so long, I agonized. It was like, if I put it all in there, it was literally, I ran the footage, and yes, I could have speeded it up and chopped it out, but it still would have probably been about 40 minutes. Just me talking and planting, and so I trimmed it. You're not gonna be able to hear this with the weed whackers. And this is going to be going on for weeks because there's weed abatement all over the hillsides here because of fires in Southern California. You know, they're talking about how bad it's going to be this year. So everybody has to get their weeds out. I'm hoping you can hear me. I should get used to being mic. Periodically, I mic myself and I don't like the sound of it. I, I'm more, I like to be more natural and I'm very spontaneous. So I'll be doing something in the house or some part of the garden and I'll get a thought and I'll grab my camera and run out there and that's the video you see. So that's why I'm not real big on miking. But anyways, I digressed and now I forgot what I was talking about. Basically, I've got a lot of footage that I might start to put up because it, some of you might want to hear it. Like here, you know, I, I'm looking at this and I'm definitely going to change this and I have to hold myself back because I want to finish my rainbow garden. That is number one. I want to get the last vertical garden up and then that system I'm going to put in there, which I know so many of you can use because a lot of your plants are heavy feeders. And I don't buy plant food. You can buy plant food, but I make my own and it works. I've been doing it, it works. So I need to get that done. So I have to stay focused on that. And then when I'm done with that, I can wander back here. It's kind of like I stopped everything to finish the back part of the wall heading towards the bathtub. I got that all done now. Well, as done as it's gonna be. There's, I've got a few more ideas I wanna do in there. I need to finish the rest of the wall. I haven't, I haven't done the driveway, but I'm thinking about doing it differently this year. It's my garden. If it was your garden, you could tear it all apart, you know, pull out all the old plants, compost them right back in the tote, uh, put a layer of good potting soil on the top, you know, either you buy it or take it from another tote. That's really good potting soil. This is ridiculous, because I know you can't hear me. Oh, look at him. He's got a mouthful of peanuts. But I think I'm going to layer. I think I'm going to leave a lot of the plants that are already there because they're making a fantastic comeback. I'm probably going to leave that crazy squash that's over a year old because even though it's on that long cord, it's getting enough nutrition because of the system. I'm going to show you how I make it and go that way. I need to get up my seed, how I start seeds. I start seeds all different ways. You've seen it with the plastic bags. I got video on that. I actually like that the best because I know I'm taking care of something that's alive and growing. And when I pot it, 
I know it was a live seed. I really had 100% come up. I may have had a couple take longer because the weather got cool again, but I've had 100% come up. So that is one of my favorite ways because I can see that it's got a tail on it, the root is coming, and I know I'm dealing with something that's alive. Otherwise, you plant in all these pots, paper cups, all that, and then you wait and wait, and some of the seeds are no good. I did my cucumbers that way, too. And I'm very happy with my cucumbers. i got to do a separate video on that, and hopefully I won't forget when I get it all together. i got to get that right up, because I've got more cucumbers this year than I've ever had before. So that was it. I just thought I'd come have a cup of coffee. I'm not scatterbrained. That I am not. I do stay focused on what I'm doing, but the problem is I have so many thoughts going that I end up doing one project and before I'm finished, I start another project and then I'll think of another one as I'm working on the second project and I'll go to the third project. But I do come back and finish the first project, but then I'm spreading myself thin, so I'm not getting, my goodness, scrub jays are funny. I'm not getting everything done. I'm as fast, let's put it that way, as fast as I want. But then that's okay, it's my pace. But the problem is I wanna finish, let's say, a video or something. And so I really have to stay focused on that. But I've got a lot of videos I've made and I didn't put them up because I thought you'd be bored, that's all. So I could put up a file called Boring Stuff, Listen If You Want, and I could do that at one point. But like today, I need to do my ginger and turmeric. They are bursting the pots. And I've got so much, but then I've got to do my potatoes. My cucumbers, I need to finish kind of stringing them up a little bit. I had Gary bend me some rebar, and we'll talk about that another time. And I just couldn't believe the way I build my totes, and you can do that in the ground as well if you wanted to, flower pots, whatever container raised bed. It, there's so much nutrition in there that the plants just go wild to grow. I couldn't believe how big the cucumbers got this time. And when I say big, it's instead of just sending out a couple of vines, it's sending out multiple upon multiple vines. And there's only five cucumber plants because one of them is a watermelon. So I'm trying to keep up with the, oh, this is the video I've been waiting for. Oh, well, at least I got it on here. That's another water fountain I just built. The easiest fountain anybody could build. The bucket one, you haven't even seen that one yet. So I just thought I'd come out and say hello and sit with here with my cameras, the weed whackers all over the hillsides, clear the weeds. Gary does it all on his own. He actually has done so well taking care of the weeds with his wood chips and stuff that he doesn't have as much, but he still has to trim out, you know, a lot of weeds that do come up. Plus, we leave the south thistle for the goldfinches and the bush tits and other birds. Even the hummingbirds use the south thistle to build their nests. And then when they're all dead and the birds are done with it, then he pulls them out. And we compost them. We don't, nothing gets thrown out. Everything goes back because that's the way nature did it. And I just love the, the totes are amazing. When you build a fresh tote, the way I do, the storage containers, and it could be a raised bed, all that matter starts to break down with the microbes and earthworms and everything. It builds its own ecosystem where the soil is about 70, 75 degrees which is perfect spring, late spring growing soil. So the plants you plant in there, you can't stop them from growing. That's why it's so amazing that the new ones will grow faster than the older ones that are just being refurbished because it's not gonna be quite as warm, though it's gonna be wonderful to grow in. Absolutely wonderful. It's just that they're gonna grow at the right time where the ones you build fresh from scratch are going to grow earlier because they think it's the right time, even though it's still cold at night, 40, 50 degrees at night, they're gonna start growing because the bottom base, the roots, the roots is sending up the message that, well, it's warm, let's grow. And it's doing fantastic. I've got zucchini that I absolutely have to get off because I don't want it big and they're massive already. So I'm gonna get those off. And then I'll have more zucchini growing in the back. I've gotta get a lot more on zucchini because I've noticed looking around that a lot of people are more interested in cucumbers, which are great, than zucchini. And it should be the opposite. Zucchini is one of the easiest vegetable plants to grow. They don't vine everywhere, so you don't have to worry about them taking over your yard if you don't want them to. The other thing is you can use them for any meal. You go, wait a minute, how can you have them for breakfast? You can use them for any meal. They are the greatest filler. They're the greatest vegetable. They don't hurt you. It's not like 
kale. You know, some people eat two pounds of dark leafy greens a day like kale, and that's fine. You eat too much and you end up with issues. You can't eat too much of a good thing. You have to, everything's a balance. Well, you know what? You could eat as much zucchini as you want because everything is so well balanced and there's nothing in it that can be overpowering on the body that you could eat a lot of zucchini. But you're not going to eat that much because you're not going to grow that much. I add it into everything. I do like my tacos with ground beef. If grass-fed is available at a decent price, I try to get that. You know, as I'm getting older, I've noticed meat is a little harder on me, especially beef. So what I do is I can take a pound of ground meat that I fry up, let's say, to use in whatever I want, tacos, enchiladas, lasagna, whatever I want to do with that. But I can turn that pound into two or three pounds, and it's not all meat. And it doesn't bother me at all because I use a zucchini for that. Zucchini is wonderful because not only is it good for you, but it takes over the flavor of whatever you're eating, you know, or I should say whatever you're cooking. It's fantastic. You, If you don't like it, which I don't know how you wouldn't like it because it doesn't really have that much of a taste. It takes over other food tastes, you know, that you're cooking with. It becomes like a filler that's nutritious. So it'd be great for kids, great for yourself. If you want a little bit of meat, you can mix it with chicken, turkey, whatever you want. Pork. I'm going to get more into that, but as far as breakfast, you can mix it in your pancakes and not know it's there if you want to make pancakes. You know my favorite way of eating zucchini? My very favorite way is a nice young zucchini. You don't have to peel it when you get them young, you know, where they're not really bigger than six or seven inches. They haven't gone seedy on you, which they won't really at that time. Sliced up thin, thrown in a frying pan with a tablespoon of butter, and fried up with a little salt and pepper. That's it. That's my favorite way of zucchini, but I use it for everything. I use it for baking. I use it for breakfast, lunch, dinner. I make pickles out of it. You can do anything you want with it. So I got to get more into zucchini so more people understand how wonderful that is. And of course, you can make your noodles out of it by putting it in a twisty thing, but I don't do that, but I do have one. I have done it. Salad, you can add it to salad. You can eat zucchini raw, you can eat zucchini cooked, you can eat zucchini baked, you can do anything you want with it. You can blend it up and put it in a soup and give a nice thick base to your soup with it. And it won't alter the flavor of your soup. That's what would be so cool. That I do more in the winter. And I want to get zucchini growing this winter and keep it up against the wall. Feed it in the system in which I feed it because they're heavy feeders. You just don't want to let them ever dry out. You want to continue to feed them and you can do it for free. I do it on the free. So if you want, I'll read the comments and I'll see if you guys come in and say, yeah, we want to see the gibberish you do. I mean, like somebody asked me, please put up the one that you tooled the big Goliath tomato in the driveway. The one that should have technically been taken out because it's a um, determinant and it's growing again. It, it's already grown twice full of tomatoes. It's in the middle of growing again. She said, you told the whole thing to keep the rodents out, which I did. We want to see you. And I looked at it. It was dark. It was done early in the morning. You could barely see me. You could barely hear me. You know, I've got all that. I just don't want to bore anybody. Well, that's it. This is really fun. Right now I see there's a goldfinch sitting up there. We've had house finches come on in. I guess the scrub jays are hiding all their stuff. That's why you got sunflowers growing everywhere you go. How in the world did a sunflower grow on the top of a hillside with nothing there? Because they tucked it away for a rainy day and they forgot about it. And it got some sort of moisture on it and it grew. And that's how you end up with flowers and seeds all over. Yeah, I want to clean this up. This looks nice, but it doesn't look nice. It looks like a mess. I think it does. Oh, we've got a songbird in there. And we've got a dove now that came in. I want to get more fountains going. I want it to be 90% edible. I don't know if you can eat geraniums. And here I'm fortunate enough that these geraniums, I don't even know what kind they are. I don't even know where they came from. They might have even been bits and pieces here when we got the house and they just kept growing. They grow like a weed so I can move them around. They look pretty. The birds like them. They hide in them and there's something on them because the hummingbirds are always picking things off. I don't think they have a lot of pollen. They may have tiny insects on them because hummingbirds eat a lot of insects. That's where they get their protein and their calcium from. Insects have, let's say, bones so that's how they get their calcium they wouldn't eat much look how small they are and then of course you know they eat the nectar which they get from my feeder these birds are sitting saying she's talking to herself she's sitting here talking to herself so we'll clean this up one day and i don't don't get me thinking about this or i'll run and do this and this is something i don't want to run and do i let's see so what am i going to do today i need to put two videos together that i put together and or i should I've got them all ready to go and put up. And one of them is on, oh, here comes a gross beak. I love the gross beaks. 
One of them is on how to make a bucket lighter. So people that are on balconies and they just want to maybe move it around. You simply move it around. I'm going to make some lighter. You're going to see why later on. And then I've got the other one on how I start some of my seeds. It's, it's just a video I put together and then it went on to another thing. And I actually found that this morning because I'm looking for the clip on my cucumber seeds. And I found that and thought, oh no, I forgot to put that up. Aren't they gorgeous? That's a male. He's in the bowl. I'm hoping you can see him. If I move too much, you might leave. See, see, let me see. Let me put my finger here. See. Let me see if you can see. See, he's in, I think he's in that bowl right there. Because that, that's a little house finch. And that one is the gross beak, the orange one. The males are orange and black, and the females are more drab. The babies are drab too, but they're they're cute because they have a little bit of a puffier face. Their feathers are out and they look around. It's like, ooh, what's going on? The house finches, as you see them coming in, are the ones, you know, that are brown, different tones of brown. And the males are red. Now the males, as they get a little older and breeding season comes in, like now they'll be very bright red. And then the baby males, sometimes they look kind of an orangey and they got flecks because it takes time for them to get the color. All the babies look like females when it comes out, when they come out in the nest, the house finches. But I'd like to get, I think, back here some more purple tree colored. I have so much, and I wouldn't mind to have a jungle of that. Even Kitty likes that. Oh, here comes the dove. I know a lot of people don't like doves. I'm lucky that I don't have too many. They haven't found it here because I, granted, I know that they can be a problem. Who's my problem? The house finches eat a lot of my greens. So do the goldfinches. The goldfinches eat a lot of greens, and I really don't want to stop them. That's why I'm thinking if I get a ton of stuff growing in here, I can keep them more in here. Now, I can tool. Tool has been wonderful. I'm coming up with all kinds of ways to tool, even ways I haven't used last year. But I don't want to tool everything, and you don't want to look at tool all over the garden. So if I put something here, and they're not tooled, I can use the nice leaves they haven't gotten to, or I could tool part of the plant, just part of it. So I'll keep them off of that. And the reason tool is much nicer to drape over your plants than bird netting, bird netting has big holes, and they actually land on that with the big holes. Think of how small their feet are, the house finches. And they get their feet stuck in the hole, they can't get it out. And then they get tangled, and if you're not around there to let them out, they'll perish out in the sun. When it comes with tulle, oh, here comes a female gross beak now. That's a female. See how she's tanner? She's lighter colored. She doesn't have all the orange. That is a female. She's in the bowl right now. They get their feet stuck and they cannot get out. That's why I don't like bird netting. That's actually a way they trap birds in the wild in different countries. They don't use it here as far as I know. Tool is a fine netting. You know what tool is. They make slips out of it, the veils for wedding dresses. It's used for all kinds of stuff like that. They can't get their foot stuck and their nail is no big deal. They get their nails in it, but they can bend their nails and release it one, two, three. I've never seen a bird stuck in tool. They can't get stuck. They'll land on it, they'll climb all over it, they'll look, but the birds, see the birds aren't afraid of it. The birds will land on it, but they don't do anything with it. So they just land on it, look around, and then they leave. They can't chew it, they don't like it, they don't know what it is. Rodents, on the other hand, have tiny nails, and when they get stuck, and this includes rabbits, they think it's a trap, and that's why sometimes if you don't tie it down, let's say I don't tie it down, I'll find that in the other side of the yard because they took off running and it chased them. Can you imagine a big thing of tool chasing them? I've seen rabbits touch it and they've leaped back. I've actually got a video on it and I don't know where that video is, and I'm hoping one day I'll run into it, where he touched some tool and he literally looked like a cartoon flipped backwards about four feet because he thought it was a trap. So they stay away from it. Now, if it tears, they'll stick their head in and, the, you know, let's say the wind tears it or something at its age because my tool lasts a long time. I've had it last two years in the garden, but it can get snagged on sticks coming or down in the wind or something. If they find a hole, then they'll stick their head in and they'll eat some of your plants. But let me tell you something, you can patch tool up really easy and I'll get into that too. But the quickest way is put a piece of tool over it and for now, just close pin it on and then you don't even have to change the whole thing. So that's it. I just thought I'd say hello. Enjoy the birds. Let's see if we can zoom in on the gross beak without a Oh, she left again. See, she's real shy. This is my new feeder. Let me put my coffee down. You got to get into that because everybody and anybody can make that. This is actually what I was going to come out and watch. Is that cool? That's not cement. It's not styrofoam. I love the styrofoam. I am not putting the styrofoam down. The hummingbirds love it. But let me tell you something. 
once you got hummingbirds, they love that too. We'll get into that one another day. And then, of course, there's the dove down there. Oh, here comes the scrub jay. But that's it. This is actually quiet. I usually have far more birds than what's... Oh, it's the video I've been wanting. Look at that. You saw it with me. Oh, I got my video. Yay, that's the one I wanted. So cool, because I just put that out a little while ago, and I've seen them coming to it, and of course I don't have a camera all the time. So I think with that, I'm very happy. I got what I wanted, and I'm, now I'm going to go get my stuff done and go look at those videos I forgot to put out. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And keep in mind, I literally get thousands of comments and questions a day. I don't pick anybody for any particular reason. I go on there. Sometimes I take the latest comments. Sometimes I try to take the oldest. Sometimes it's just the way they pop up. Just the way YouTube puts it out on there, I see comments and I just answer a few, or, you know, go through them. I don't have anybody hired, so it's not somebody going through my comments for me. It's just me. Gary's usually too busy working and doing his project. He tries to go through any video he puts up. He tries to make sure he goes through all his, but he hasn't put up as many videos as me because he's always working and he's working on one now. He's working, I think he's working on a couple different videos. So I think with that, uh, like I said, don't, please don't take offense to that. I'd rather try to figure out how to do more live and go on, but then how do I, you know, do that? So I'm trying to figure out on the questions, if there's a question that's asked like a hundred times, that's a really good one to go over and just chit chat. Cause sometimes you may not have asked the question, but I may have a thought. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm going to go get some stuff done. And, it's, you know, this is very hard to leave, but I know I got to go fill hummingbird feeders. So I'm going to go get some stuff done. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. I'm going to finish my coffee. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye.